Hi, I'm Jill Oldham, and I'm the CEO and principal of Rockdale Career Academy. We opened our building in 2006 with about 1,100 students, and today we are at about 2,000, which also includes about 93 and 4-year-olds. We, Our school was grown from the foresight of our school board and our community. They brought us together to provide um, programs for students in the community and hopefully programs for, for some of the adults in the community as well. And I will hand this off to Ben McCumber who will talk a little bit more about the programs. I'm Ben McCumber, I'm the program director um, and we have about 15 programs, everything from culinary arts to public safety, early childhood education, manufacturing, automotive. Uh, we, our students take at least one pathway, sometimes two, sometimes three of those. Uh, we also have about 60 to 70 students that take college courses, including firefighting, EMT, welding, and cosmetology. Um, and we provide certifications with those, uh, the ability to get jobs, work-based learning that come along with those. I think I'll hand it over to uh, Scott Stanton to talk about where our students come from. Our students come from three high schools. We have three high schools in our county, Rockdale County High School, Heritage High School, and Salem High School. And the students that come to us come to us because the programs we offer are not offered at their uh, three high schools. Uh, we have a wide range of population ranging from students who are the richest of the rich, the poorest of the poor, and everything in between, who have a variety of uh, dreams and desires to really work through things in our career academy. Uh, with all the different programs that we do offer, they're able to specialize in one or maybe even two pathways. and. So their uniqueness from their school cultures, their school communities, makes ours an even more unique culture. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to another assistant principal. I'm Scott Stanton, one of the assistant principals, and I'm gonna pass it over to Chris Mays. Hi, I'm Chris Mays. So to serve those 2,000 plus students, we not only utilize teachers that come from a traditional teaching background, but we highly utilize teachers who come out of industry in the professional world. Um, that may be an automotive instructor who once ran three businesses here in town and sold them to come teach our students, or it may be a Cisco networking instructor who left the GBI and the Army to come teach computer networking to our students. Um, we, we tell a story about how if you can find one thing that will really hook a kid about coming to school, that they will come in and perform across the board. And that's what we're able to do with all the instructors that we bring in from the, the industry and, and the business world. And we think that's what makes us very successful. I'm gonna pass this to Eddie Summer. Well, thank you. I will talk about our, um, our regular academic teachers. In order to serve all the students we have here in their different pathways, we also have to have teachers that will teach the academic side. So we have teachers here from social studies to science as well as English, and they are able to pair with the pathway teachers to help bring about the whole student and a whole career culture here. So that is embedded in everything that we do. Our students understand and they utilize their pathway teachers as well as the academic teachers to create this wonderful culture we have here, our Career Academy. Rockdale Career Academy is also what's called a public charter school. We not only are a part of our public school system, which helps tremendously with the relationships with the home high schools, but we also have a charter, which we have to operate not only by the public school rules, but by the charter school rules. And we have to make sure that we are living up to the expectations and utilizing our charter for the betterment of our programs. Our charter also allows us to step outside of some of the rules that are put down from the, the State Department, not that they're bad rules, but sometimes we need to do it a little differently, particularly when it comes to teacher certification. We're able to step out, pull people from industry, and keep them up under our charter for a little while until they decide whether or not they would like to, to go into a couple of the programs locally to um, maintain their certification or actually pick up a different type of certification in addition to what they own from industry. 
To talk a little bit more about some of our relationships, I will hand this off to Ben McCumber, and he will address some of the vendors. We work with uh, some post-secondary institutions, two-year colleges, technical colleges, to provide some of our programs. In fact, we will be expanding with a uh, medical building uh, that Ms. Summer will talk a little bit more about in a minute. But one thing we've also done is gone with private vendors for certified nursing assistant and EKG certification. And we are able, as a charter school, to use some of that money to hire them as contract teachers to give high school students uh, real-world certifications uh, that they are paying very little for. And in our area, that is that is huge for those students to give them those opportunities. Um, and then I pass it to Ms. Summers. She is over our health care as the AP that deals with them and talk about where that's headed with our new uh, expansion coming up in the next couple of years. Yeah, so we will be breaking ground about January 2017, looking at a new health care facility that we will add on to our already established building here at RCA. In that um, new building, we will house different parts of health care or different career pathways. I think we will be adding things like dentistry as well as our CNA students will be housed there as well. Um, so different avenues if we have students uh, interested in the healthcare pathway, we will be offering different avenues for them to actually look out and uh, explore these pathways uh, as well in our new building. So it will be a grand and fabulous two story, uh, full of new technology and things for our students to be able to explore their options uh, for healthcare. In addition to the, the instructional partners um, who help us, a, a lot of the opportunities that are made possible for our students are possible because of our, our partnerships with local businesses. Um, our students come from a, a largely financially unstable background. From year to year, we have about a 65 to 70 percent free and reduced lunch rate. So a lot of opportunities wouldn't be available to our students if it weren't for the generosity of our, our local partners. Um, we've had over 200 local businesses work with our students through work-based learning and internships and apprenticeships over the years um, so that those students can go out and learn on the job site. Um, a lot of the opportunities for our students are also made possible through the RCA Inc. Foundation. Um, which is sponsored through a, a number of events throughout the year. Um, the, the biggest of which we call the Bridge Builder event, which is a dinner uh, that is put on by our culinary department um, with keynote speakers um, from around the community and an auction event that raises several thousand dollars for our students to make different things from competitions and travel and field trips possible that, that wouldn't otherwise be available for our kids. The new building that we're bringing up in the in the back of the current building will increase our square footage. Right now we sit at about 200,000 square feet and we'll be adding another 50,000 once that new building comes up. It's through partnerships with some of the local colleges, not just the immediate colleges in the area, and also a partnership with some of the businesses that will make some of those very pricey labs possible and will be able to help us keep those labs current. One of our biggest pushes is to make sure that we are providing relevant education without old technology because you can't send a student into the world and expect them to be successful if you're teaching them concepts that are 20 years old and terribly out of date. We just actually had our first partner jump in yesterday to provide one of the labs and we are hoping that that will follow. We, we have a, we're looking at a state-of-the-art nursing lab. We're looking at a state-of-the-art clinical lab facility, hopefully with the industry certifications. We're also looking at a biotech lab. All of that to say that we are surrounded in our community with different facilities and businesses who operate in that area. And we are hoping that that relationship will become even stronger with the addition of our new building and the opportunities available through there. If you have any questions about our Career Academy, we have rockdalecareeracademy.org on the internet. But one other thing to keep in mind is that this school is for all of the students in Rockdale County, not just a few. We serve the gifted. We serve those who need learning supports. 
this school is open to anyone who would like to come, who has a desire to come and study whatever we offer from our career pathways through our advanced placement courses all the way through our college courses. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I break it out every night. You don't have to get. Number one was my favorite. Um, it was very juicy, tender, um, had a good flavor. Number five was my least favorite. A uh, little bit dry and not much flavor at all to it. Number two actually had a real good flavor too. It was a little dry though. I'd agree. Number one was my favorite. It had a little good smoky aftertaste. Number two had a little bit more heat. Um, I was very impressed. All the product was really good. Cooked almost every one of them perfectly well. Good flavor, good tenderness, uh, outstanding competition. I'd say number one was my favorite as well. Uh, number five uh, had a little bit too much cumin, I think, uh, in the, uh, uh, the sauce. Um, number two and number four seemed to be a little bit dry, but that may be because of uh, the, uh, the piece of meat that they served us. Uh, I would say that uh, number two, uh, two is actually my favorite. My piece uh, was not very was uh, was fine. It wasn't very dry at all. Number one was good, and so was also number four. Number five, uh, the skin was a bit rubbery, and uh, so that uh, I found that a little bit uh, negative. Number one was spot on juiciness, tenderness, taste. Number two for leg, I thought was also very good. Nice and juicy. Three, I thought it was a little bit too spicy for me. Four was a little bit dry, and I thought five, my piece I had was also rubbery. Very good job to all the teams out there. This was a great showing of chicken. I would say number two was number one for me. It had just the right amount of spice to it. Number one was good, but it just didn't, it might have been possibly the wrong choice, wrong cut of meat for me to ha get all the full flavors of it. We, um, the rest of them, three, four, and five work well, but they could have um, possibly chosen a different cut of meat as well. On this batch of ribs, um, personally my favorite was probably number three. Had good flavor, very tender. Pulled off the bone. Second would be number one. Great taste, but unfortunately it was a little mushy. And number five, I don't know what was wrong with number five. It was, tastes like it came out of the freezer. I'm sorry. Um, it was cold and odd taste to it. Entry number one had good flavor, good smoke flavor to it, but it was overdone and fell off the bone. Two and three had good flavors also. Um, three was probably the better of those. And number four had uh, also had a very good flavor too. So all the, the first four were, to me, had good flavor. None were incredibly outstanding, but they were better than average. Uh, number five, for whatever reason, was cold, and because it was cold, I think it completely changed the flavor profile, and it just wasn't up to standards.
Overall, this was a great batch of ribs, but I agree. The first one was had a great taste, but it was overcooked. Number two was tough. I couldn't, pull, couldn't even bite it off the bone. Number three was delicious, great flavor, very tender. Uh, number four was good. Number five was cold, but um, the flavor just wasn't there. I agree that this was a really good batch of ribs. Uh, number one, I uh, thought had a really good flavor. Um, mine was not as overcooked as some of the others. I, I thought it just was well done. Number two was very tough. Um, I had difficulty even getting enough off to, uh, to taste. Uh, I thought number three was uh, a very well done uh, rib. The taste was good. The texture was good. Um, uh, that one was probably my favorite. Number four um, was okay, um, just not not the uh, up to the caliber of some of the others. And number five um, just had some um, qualities that didn't make it a favorite. Okay, number one. Um, once again, it was a little mushy texture. Um, it had great flavor. Um, just a little overcooked. Number two, once again, was pretty tough. Um, if it would have cooked a little bit longer, it would have been pretty outstanding, but it was still just a little tough. Number three, nice, nice smoke ring, nice texture, nice color, great flavor, pulled off the pork, but it wasn't mushy. Um, number four had a lot of potential, but was not just quite there yet. It was very close. Um, and then number five, Temperature really affected it. It, it really made it um, almost unpalatable. Um, and the sauce was kind of pooling on top of it, which even made it a little bit more difficult to, to, to eat. I kind of disagree with the majority. Uh, I was not real impressed with this uh, set of ribs. Uh, number one, I thought was it had the best flavor, but I, it just seemed mushy to me. Uh, number two was overcooked. Had I, th I thought that probably had the better flavor of the five, but it was just over or undercooked. It wasn't cooked right. I know that much. Uh, number three, I thought it just you could have shaken it off the bone, which is not uh, at least my my piece was that way. It tasted uh, uh, real sweet to me. Don't know exactly what that was. Uh, number four just seemed to be kind of average, and five I agree. Uh, had good potential, but just a little bit too cold. Any more? Uh, no, you're good. It's more. For pork, I liked the tenderness in number one. Had very good taste. Uh, number two, you can see there's a little bit of unrendered fat, and a little underdone. Uh, I really like the flavor in three. Um, a little bit mushy, but it had good fruity taste in the sauce to me. Uh, this fourth entry had good tubes, which I always like. Um, a little underdone, a little tough. And then five, Pretty salty, almost had a beef flavor, kind of like brisket. Uh, number one, graded out the best in, in this uh, category. Uh, good tenderness, uh, good moisture level, uh, appearance scored high, uh, good flavor as well. Uh, number two, a little tougher, um, uh, a little less flavorful, as you can see, a little, little drier. Uh, number three uh, had a little mushy consistency to it, had a decent flavor. Uh, number four graded out pretty well, had a nice bark um, coloration, a little bit uh, dry in appearance, but when you tasted it, it actually had a nice moisture level. Number five graded out the lowest of the category, uh, dry, overcooked, uh, not a lot of uh, good flavor, uh, and that's pretty much how, how those five graded out. I'm um, really not sure what else I can add to it. I agree with what they're saying. 
on all five pictures. Uh, number one. Number one was my favorite uh, because it was evenly cooked, straight out of the box, great appearance, and not and then, and had great taste to it. Uh, number three was my worst, uh, over well, second worst. It was the mushy, overcooked, and number five was the driest, and it just really dry. But uh, the other number two and number f- uh, f- uh, four pretty consistent, very similar consistency. But again, number one is favorite, and uh, three and number five were the worst. Number one was uh, my favorite. The money mussel was perfectly cooked, good taste, good flavor. Um, I agree with two, three, four, and number five uh, was very dry. It looked dry. There was no sauce, no taste. Thank you. Number one had the best taste, as the other judges have said. Numerous ones were extremely dry and didn't have a whole lot of taste or were overcooked, but number one overall. Good afternoon, everyone. I enjoyed the brisket samples that you see here in front of you, and my favorites today were number two and number four. Number two had a nice peppery taste that I really enjoyed. It was tender and juicy. And then number four had a nice beef flavor to it, and it was tender and juicy as well. Uh, number one was number one was good, but it was a little sweet. Number three was extremely dry and tough. Uh, number four was fantastic, and I thought number five was a little bland and tough as well. Um, number two and number four were my favorites, uh, both in tenderness and in taste. Um, number one was decent. Number three and number five were my least favorite due to taste and... <coughs> Number two and four definitely were the best, and we all enjoyed our brisket. It was very good. 